Hello, I'm State Representative Sarah Walsh, and I represent the 50th District in the Missouri House of Representatives. Between January and May, I work in Jefferson City to represent your views and concerns in the Missouri House. During my time in the capital city, I have the privilege of working in one of the most beautiful public office buildings in the entire country. Under normal circumstances, you would likely take a class trip to visit our historic state capital where you would be able to enjoy its awe-inspiring architecture in person. However, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, trips to Jefferson City are now on hold. But even though you can't make it to the capital in person, that doesn't mean you should miss out on the many wonders it holds. The video you are about to watch will give you a brief tour of the Missouri State Capitol in Jefferson City. During the video, you'll learn about the history of our state capitol, see some rare and amazing works of art, and discover why the people who work there are so important. I hope you enjoy this opportunity to get a first-hand look at your state capitol. What could you build with 240,000 cubic feet of stone, four and a half million bricks, 31,000 square feet of glass, as much steel, nearly 5,200 tons, as found in the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, and the creations of the best artists in the world. Maybe you would do what the people of the Show Me State did back in 1913. Maybe you would build a monument to Missouri. For all practical purposes, this is just another office building. People work here, employed by the citizens of Missouri to do the people's business. Some work here because they choose to, and others because the voters of the state sent them here. But when you look inside this building, you soon discover it is more than just a place of work. It is a building that serves as a monument to the people who live in Missouri and those who have contributed to its illustrious history. It is a publicly financed building where, when you open its doors, you are exposed to an incomparable visual history of Missouri. The Missouri Capitol, constructed with native stone, sits elevated on the banks of the Missouri River in the city of Jefferson, a centrally located river town that did not exist until the Missouri General Assembly voted on the last day of 1821 to locate the seat of state government there. Now the city is home to more than 35,000 people and a host to more than a quarter of a million people that visit the Capitol each year. At first glance, the building appears to be an immovable object a proud testament to precise engineering and planning. Once inside, you realize it is an evolving museum of the people it represents. After being housed in two temporary quarters in St. Louis, and then in a building in St. Charles, Missouri's seat of government officially came to Jefferson City in the year 1826. A little more than 10 years later, in November of 1837, flames from a fireplace burned out of control the state's first permanent capital was destroyed by fire. It took only three years for the state to construct and move into a new capital. The structure won rave reviews for its architecture, but due to the governmental responsibilities of a growing state, the building had to be expanded in 1888. Soon after the expansion, a controversy erupted on whether a new capital should be built. The people rejected a constitutional amendment in 1896 to move the capital out of Jefferson City, and in 1910, voters rejected a bond issue request to build a new capital despite Governor Herbert S. Hadley's prophetic warnings that the current capital was a fire hazard. On the night of February the 11th, 1911, with Governor Hadley just down the street in the governor's mansion entertaining reporters, lightning struck the capitol dome. They rushed to try to save some records and valuables but within hours, the capital was consumed by flames. For the second time in 74 years, fire forced the state to begin construction of a new building for state government. Plans to replace the capital were quickly made. Within 47 days, a bipartisan state capital commission was formed to oversee construction of a new capital. In August, Missourians voted to begin that construction. Nearly 70 architectural firms entered a contest to design the new capital, 
The New York City company of Tracy and Swartout won the competition. The groundbreaking ceremony was held on May the 6th, 1913. The contract called for the best quality native Missouri granite and stone. Burlington limestone from Carthage was used for most of the building, except for stone used on the third floor, which came from Greene County. Eleven years later, on October the 6th, 1924, an unprecedented celebration took place as the state dedicated its third capital. Dignitaries, musicians, and entertainers marched along High Street on the cold, damp day with the United States Army dirigible floating above. At the dedication, Missourians came from across the state to see what the people entrusted to build the Capitol had done. It is, the Capitol Commission had said, as far as could be, a Missouri-made building. The Capitol, the visitors that day discovered, is five stories tall with a half million square feet of floor space and nine million cubic feet in total size. The building, built in the Roman Renaissance style, is 437 feet long, 200 feet wide in the wings, and 300 feet wide at the center. There are 134 columns that support the building inside and out. The structure is highlighted by a dome about 90 feet in diameter, 250 feet above the terrace level of the building. Standing on top of the dome is a statue of Ceres, the mythical goddess of agriculture. Hoists and pulleys had to be used to bring Ceres to her permanent home after the capital was completed. Not including artwork, Missouri taxpayers paid a little more than $4 million for the building, land, and furnishings for the capital. To rebuild it today would cost up to $90 million. While the capital is an impressive work of architecture, its layout is based on practical reasoning. Architect Egerton Swartout wrote, all state capitals have essentially the same requirements. They must house the legislative and executive departments of the state. These requirements necessitate the placing of the legislative department on a floor higher than the entrance floor, as there must be at least two, and in some cases, three floors of offices below. Located on the third floor of the capitol on the west side of the building is the house chamber. Here, 163 men and women, each representing about 30,000 constituents, meet from January to May each year to consider new laws. The room they work in is noted for its craftsmanship, from the decorative hawthorns to the commanding state seal to the 10 stained glass windows that the commission says illustrate the greatest characteristics of democracy. also is noted for its details, such as the thin leaves of real gold applied to some of the chamber's ornate features and the richly carved speaker's dais. The room is lined with 12 granite pillars that had to be imported from New Hampshire. In the back of the chamber in the visitor's gallery is a painting donated to the state by France. Entitled The Glory of Missouri at War, it honors a Missouri battle unit credited with protecting a portion of France during World War I. Across the chamber, above the press gallery, is an ornate window called the Glory of Missouri in Peace. The detailed window pays homage to the resources and history of the state and also recognizes Missouri as the start of westward expansion in the United States. Across the hall on the east side of the Capitol is the Missouri Senate Chamber. Here, 34 men and women, each representing about 150,000 constituents, serve the other legislative arm of government. The Senate chamber features 16 marble pillars extending around the gallery and behind the detailed president's rostrum. Overlooking the chamber are four historical murals that pay tribute to pioneer Daniel Boone, explorers Lewis and Clark, as they met President Jefferson after their celebrated expedition, U.S. Senator Thomas Hart Benton delivering a speech in 1849 urging the destruction of a transcontinental railroad, and Frank Blair speaking at Louisiana, Missouri in 1866 despite threats on his life. In between the chambers is the third floor rotunda, which is about 65 feet in diameter and about 140 feet in height. Looking up 65 feet from the third floor rotunda, one can see the whispering gallery. Access to the gallery for the general public has been restricted due to safety and other concerns, but the area was designed so that a person whispering into the wall at one point of the gallery could be heard at any other point along the wall. The Capitol architect claimed this was the first designed whispering gallery and all previous ones were simply architectural accidents. Far below, on the first floor, is what was first called the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall. 
Now, visitors are invited to view the two wings called the History Hall and Resources Hall, where exhibits chronicle Missouri events and natural beauty. Surrounding these great rooms and halls are offices for representatives and senators, as well as five of the state's top six elected officials. The lieutenant governor, who serves as an advocate for state citizens, has an office on the first floor of the Capitol building. On the second floor is the secretary of state, who is Missouri's chief elections official and responsible for the state's record keeping. On the same floor on the other side of the building is the state auditor, charged with reviewing the financial conditions of state agencies, boards, commissions, and some local governments. The state treasurer, who is the custodian of all state funds, also has an office on the second floor. But the featured office on this floor belongs to the chief executive officer of the state, the governor. The room is about 30 by 50 feet and is lined with oak. A frieze of carved seals of all the states and territories in the Union surrounds the ceiling. The governor shares working office space with murals of kindergarten founder Susan Elizabeth Blow, internationally acclaimed author Samuel Langhorne Clemens, more commonly known as Mark Twain, children's poet Eugene Field, who wrote the poem Little Boy Blue, and Major James Sidney Rollins, recognized for establishing the State University in Columbia. These and other Capitol artworks were not included in the original plans for the building. The tax fund for the Capitol collected $1 million more than expected. After the Attorney General ruled the money could only be spent on the Capitol, the 49th Missouri General Assembly established the Capitol Decoration Commission. The commission hired 33 artists to create 128 works of art, including the 42 lunettes which line the second floor hallways. Here, artists captured the history of Missouri with its settlements, its expanding commerce, and involvement in conflicts. Other lunettes honor Missouri's beauty in the state's formative years. A favorite among students and others who visit the Capitol is a lunette that appears to shift as you walk by it. On this optical illusion, the end of the bridge appears to be just to the right of the center of the painting. But as you walk slowly by it, the end of the bridge appears to move to the corner of the painting. For young and old alike, there is perhaps no more impressive view than looking up into the dome of the Capitol. On each level of the domes, visitors can view stately murals of Missouri history. One person who has never seen this site, though, ironically, is the artist who painted those murals. Frank Brangwen, who lived in London, was one of the most famous mural painters of the time. He was given a sectional drawing of the dome areas and a scale model. Using these for a guide, he composed the murals and then shipped them in special containers to the Capitol. In the upper dome, he was asked to represent four great historical periods in Missouri. Based on this sketch, he illustrated the arrival of pioneers in Missouri. The most celebrated Civil War muralist when the Capitol was built was N.C. Wyeth, who was the first in three generations of famous Wyeth artists. He was contracted to paint two murals, portraying Missouri's involvement in the Civil War. He chose Battle of Westport for one composition, and the Battle of Wilson's Creek, which was, the commission said, one of the most important and desperate battles in the long struggle between the Federals and Confederates for the control of Missouri. The same quality of artist chosen to create works of art for the Missouri Capitol is found in the sculptors. James Earl Fraser created the imposing 13-foot statue of Thomas Jefferson that stands watch over the south part of the Capitol and statues on the third floor honoring explorers Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Adolph Alexander Weinman crafted the Fountain of the Centaurs, which adorns the famous Carl Bitter sculpture that recognizes the signing of the Louisiana Purchase. Fraser and Weinman are also known for their contributions to the United States Mint. Fraser designed the Buffalo Nickel in 1913, and Weinman designed the 1916 Mercury Dime. The $1 million invested by the Capitol Decoration Commission is worth more than $100 million today. Everything in the building is a testament to the state, its people, and its heritage. The front of the Capitol is guarded by statues representing the Mississippi River and the Missouri River. Inscriptions line the hallways highlighting key points in Missouri history. Even the finest details, like the railings, are designed to promote state pride. But like any good museum, works of art are continually being added to the Capitol. Missourian Thomas Hart Benton was hired in 1935 to paint a social history of the state on the walls of the House Lounge. In return for the $16,000 the state paid, it has a mural history worth millions. Some criticized Benton after the unveiling of his work for including unflattering scenes from Missouri's past. 
while threats to whitewash the paintings were heard, good judgment won out, and his interpretation of the social history of Missouri has remained intact. And today, visitors from around the world come to view it. To prove there are no hard feelings, a memorial to Benton can be found down the hall in the third floor rotunda. It is here that one can find the Hall of Famous Missourians. The hall is composed of a series of bronze busts of internationally famous Missourians, such as scientist George Washington Carver, writers Mark Twain, and Laura Ingalls Wilder, President Harry S. Truman, Lewis and Clark interpreter Sacagawea, and businessman J.C. Penney. The memory of other Missourians whose importance overshadows those inducted into the Hall of Famous Missourians can be found outside the Capitol. The Veterans Memorial was dedicated in 1991 as a permanent tribute to honor Missouri men and women who served Missouri and the United States of America during times of war and conflict. Keeping the Capitol, its artwork, and its grounds preserved for the ages is a task important to us all. Preservation efforts continue almost daily to ensure that future generations will be able to enjoy this office building that serves as the home to our state government. As the Capitol Decoration Commission said in its final report, here we find Missouri legends and Missouri history, Missouri men and Missouri women, Missouri cities and Missouri country. Missouri landscapes and Missouri rivers. Missouri at war and Missouri in peace. Missouri's distinguished sons and Missouri's achievements as a state. Missouri ideas and Missouri ideals. Missouri at all stages of her existence and development. No other state in this section of our country is so rich as Missouri in picturesque legend and colorful history. Thanks for watching this video presentation about your state capital. As our state recovers from the pandemic and begins to return to normal, I hope you will have the opportunity to make the trip to Jefferson City. For current information on the availability of tours of the state capital, you can call 573-751-2854 or check online at mostateparks.com. It is an honor and privilege to represent you in the Missouri House of Representatives. Be responsible, stay safe, and I hope to see you soon in our state capitol building. Thank you.